Hey, good morning, Las Vegas. Uh, this is Welcome to Realty Check with Trish Williams. I'm your host, Trish Williams, your local Las Vegas real estate news show where we bring you all the news of what's going on here in Las Vegas in the real estate market. Uh, thank you for joining us. If you guys are watching your sh the show, please take a moment, like, comment, share with your friends. You can download our show on iTunes or Spotify, Audible, any of those uh, portals, and you'll be notified every Thursday when we post another show. So make sure you do that and follow us every week. Uh, bringing you the news today, I have basically a year-to-date update of what's going on in 2022. Lots of news uh, to talk about today, a silver lining possibly for buyers. So we are going to get into all of that and what's happening right now. Today is February 24th, 2022. And if you are here in Las Vegas and you're watching us live tonight at our office in Henderson, 2230 Corporate Circle, uh, we are going to be hosting a free investment seminar. So this seminar is going to be talking about how to do real estate investments, how to invest in real estate, and things that you need to know or could know about starting your passive income or building wealth through real estate. So seminar is going to be free. We're not selling any like training packages or anything like that. So it's completely free, no strings attached, very informational. We'd love for you guys to join us tonight at 6 p.m. So on that note, um, every week we open up our show with current inventory. So of course, Las Vegas has been experiencing extremely low housing inventory. Um, the number this week for single family homes in Las Vegas is 1836. It's up a little bit from last week where we were 1780 something. So not a drastic change in inventory. We are still experiencing historically low inventory. Um, not a lot of houses on the market for sale. And I'm sure if you're out there shopping or if you're, um, you know, looking at Zillow or any of these places to see the homes, you see them going very quickly. And that's what happens when we have low inventory. Um, in the last seven days, we've had 167 price reductions. So we're just not seeing a lot of uh, relief there for buyers. However, um, getting started in the news today, um, we have seen uh, rising rates have started to show a bit of a, de a decrease in buyer demand. So along with that, loan applications are down 68% from a year ago. Um, that's according to an article in Inman. Um, Housing Wire had reported that refi apps are down 53%. So what that means is there's less people applying for mortgages right now. Um, there are still a lot of buyers out there that have been pre-approved, that are already pre-approved, that are still struggling to find a home. Um, they're getting beat out by multiple offers. There's a lot of buyers out there ready to buy, just having a hard time getting into that home. But with the applications down and the mortgage applications down for people applying for new mortgages, we may see some relief for that um, coming up soon. And my interpretation of that is that rates are rising. So the rising rates are certainly making buyers back off a little bit. Um, one thing to keep in mind as well is that Rates are, you know, we're hitting the high threes, low fours right now. We're hovering in that area. Um, again, this is February 2022 or yeah, February 2022. I thought we were in March for a second. Um, so if you're looking at the show years later, um, the rates may be much different. But right now, even though rates are rising and going up a little bit, we're still at a very low interest rate. So it's you know, when you look at rates over times in the past, even in 4%, even at 5%, we're still, those are still extremely low, extremely good rates. So another thing that we have is based on an article that was released by RIS Media on Realtor.com survey, more than half of landlords out there are planning on doing rent hikes. So I know you've been hearing it. If you're renting, you've been experiencing it. Last year, a lot of rents went up substantially, sometimes in some cases, four or $500 a month, and that's not over. Um, so it's not ending. Uh, there's, it says that 45% of landlords are planning a five to 10% increase in rents this year. So when that lease, that one-year lease is due, 
expect another increase coming. Um, it's very possible that will happen. 5% <clears throat> of landlords are planning a 15 to 20% increase and 3% are planning more than 20%. So your rents could still raise substantially, which brings us back to home ownership. Um, with, the, with rates uh, rents always rising, you're never going to have that security of knowing what your payment's going to be. Every year when your lease is due, that payment can change. And when you own a home, that's not, that's not going to happen. As long as you have a fixed interest rate, you're, you can always count on your mortgage being the same. So <clears throat> the national forecasted increase in rent is um, averaging at 7%. So um, despite increases, um, we do have a strong job market right now. And the, they reported that 8% of renters are saying that they're able to pay their rent. So what we've seen back in you know, 2020 and early 2021 with the moratorium and everything going on with people not being able to pay their rent, that has pretty much stabilized and people are back to work. People are um, able to afford those payments now. So there's not that many renters right now that are in default. Um, I feel like the moratorium, it's landlords trying to recoup that money um, that they had lost over that time period, which is also a result of the rents uh, raising so fast. So um, that is, uh, you know, that's basically what's happen happening. So uh, most renters right now are feeling financially stable and that things are going to be okay. Um, new construction. So if you're driving around Las Vegas and you're um, seeing all these building communities going up everywhere, it seems like every piece of vacant dirt's being built on. Um, we see communities popping up everywhere, all over the place. There's a lot of communities that are anticipated to come up soon and the thing about it is um, from a real estate standpoint even though we see building everywhere and people are thinking oh well even though there's no homes there's all these places building so there's got to be homes there they're mostly sold out um, a lot of the communities that you see popping up everywhere are sold out before the homes are even starting construction so they're selling out the lots they're selling them in phases and i i are Constantly, I'm checking on those, um, checking with the builders to see if there's any availability. There's wait lists on a lot of the lots out there. So even though you're seeing um, new construction being built, doesn't mean that there's actually homes available there. Some cases there are, we have to check and see, but most of those communities are already sold out, um, you know, on, the, on, on each phase that they're doing. So they're quite a ways out. Building times are pretty long right now, longer than we've seen in a while. Um, it was typically about six months. Right now, I'm seeing the delays, um, 12 months even I've seen in many cases. So from start to finish, you're looking at a pretty long road right there. And when you're having a new home built and you're buying in these new construction communities, um, one thing to keep in mind is the your rate's not locked in until you get closer to the home being completed. So if you're going to be looking at getting in a new construction and you're gonna be about a year out from them finishing, that rate could change substantially as we've been seeing with all the rate hikes um, that your interest rate could change substantially by the time the home is close to completion and you can actually lock in a rate. Um, that can be risky for a lot of buyers, especially if you're on the borderline of that rate, um, if that rate increases, it could change the affordability and put you out of um, being able to afford that home. So there is a lot of risk involved there. So please keep that in mind if you're out there looking at new construction. Another thing that we're seeing in new construction homes is that building materials. I know you've probably heard it on the news. We see it all over the place, but building materials have spiked substantially. Um, just this year, we're seeing even more spikes in building materials. It's supply and demand. Um, there's a lot of demand for all these materials and the supply is very low. So the Bureau of Labor Statistics has reported that just in January, there was a 25.4 rise, um, rise in lumber alone. 
a 9% increase on interior and exterior paint. Now this is interesting to me because paint is something, you know, um, my, my family's in the industry, so paint is something that we see, uh, you know, often, work with often. And even the price of paint for your home, you know, repainting, remodeling, everything, it's gone up 9% in just the last month. So if you're getting uh, quotes or planning a remodel on your house, you're probably going to see those prices a lot higher than expected. And that's because of the increase overall. Um, since August 2021, lumber increases have hit 73.9%. That's huge. So when you're seeing those prices of new construction, price of homes being built, just substantially increasing, it's because the price of materials is substantially increasing as well. So of course that rolls over into us. Um, unfortunately, as consumers, we have to pay that price. So steel prices hikes, um, the, the hike in steel prices have gone down a bit. So they haven't um, increased much over the last uh, two months, yet over the last 12 months, steel prices have doubled. So Again, that price is being passed on through the price of the home, through the lot premiums, through everything when you are building new. Um, another thing that has happened recently is uh, our company, Keller Williams, we have a national conference every year. Uh, it's called Family Reunion. It's a big realtor conference. Um, our founder and the owner of Keller Williams does a, a speak. Um, he speaks and does a state of the market speech um, during the conference to um, you know, you know, advise us of kind of where we're going, what we're at in the, um, what's happening in the real estate industry. So this year in 2022 and family reunion, um, Gary Keller had mentioned that we are in 2022, we're in an area of uncharted territories. Uh, basically saying that, you know, what's happening this year and even a little bit over last year is just something that in the real estate industry we've never experienced before. I say this very often is with inventory as low as it is, it's never been this low historically. So there's a lot of things that's happening right now in the industry that's just new uncharted waters for us. We're not, um, it's nothing that we have experienced navigating through. So we're all kind of learning along with what's going on right here, um, you know, learning as we go. Uh, however, having an agent that you're working with that is experienced and working every day in the market definitely will give you the upper hand in navigating through it. Because if you're not doing, um, you know, real estate actively on a daily basis with everything changing so rapidly as we've seen over this last couple of years, it's hard to keep up with that. So that's something that you really need to keep in mind when you're out shopping and interviewing for an agent is you really want somebody that has experience with what's going on in this market right now, because this market is so different than anything that we've had in the past. Um, the last two years has been the most remarkable appreciation period ever, ever, ever. So we've seen home prices appreciate at a higher rate than they ever have before. Um, and that's since NAR started tracking it. Um, the remarks that, it, and he, uh, Gary Keller also remarked that we are likely not in a bubble but historically, real estate has always operated in cycles. So a downturn could very well be somewhere in the future. So what that means, I know a lot of people are looking, asking, thinking about a crash. Are we in a bubble? Is a crash going to happen? Well, the likelihood of a big crash like we've seen during the Great, uh, the great Recession is very low. However, real estate does always ebb and flow. So there is going to come a point, and we might see that <clears throat> here in 2022, where things slow down just because buyers back off, the rates are high, the affordability is very low. People might back off of the from buying, but that doesn't necessarily mean that prices are going to go backwards. It just means things are going to slow down. And it's very possible that we're going to see that this year. Prices may drop slightly, but with the demand that we have right now, the 
likelihood of prices dropping a lot is very, very low. Um, if things slow down, we're going to have more inventory on the market, more houses to choose from. Buyers are going to get a lot pickier because right now buyers are not very picky at all. They're just trying to get into a home. So we're going to see changes with that. But it, the, again, the likelihood of prices dropping substantially is very low based off of all the information that we have right now. Um, and on February 17th, interest rates hit 3.9%. Um, mortgage rates have already started rising, yet the increments um, will likely be gradual. So where even though rates are going up, I don't foresee them going up substantially over the next 12 months. We're probably going to get somewhere in the fives, maybe mid fours, but we are not, I, I it's, it's again, highly unlikely that we're gonna hit those seven and eight percent within this year. Over the next couple of years, very possible, very possible. And you know, back when I bought my first home, seven and a half percent was a great rate. So it doesn't mean that it's going to be impossible to buy at that point in time. And one thing that you need to keep in mind too is that if you're, if you're renting a home right now, you're paying 100% interest rates. So <laughs> interest rates, um, although they, you know, they are rising slightly, they're still, um, it, it, it still all is in the grand scheme of things very low and owning a home is certainly the most, um, the, the best financial choice you could make um, to secure your future. So uh, we are seeing a lot of bidding wars still. Um, I know last year we had some, some funny stories out there of uh, realtors or clients beating each other with umbrellas, lines outside of homes, um, people offering crazy things on their offers, not only offering above the list price, but they were offering things such as a uh, PlayStation. I read an article of a, a family that offered a PlayStation to the kid uh, as part of their offer. So there's, um, we're still experiencing that. There's a lot of uh, bidding wars out there. People are trying to get creative and getting their offer accepted. So that hasn't slowed down. We're still seeing that a lot. One thing to keep in mind, if you're a buyer in this market, you're almost definitely going to need to offer something above the appraised value or be able to have the, um, the ability to waive the appraisal contingency on your offer in order to compete with the other offers that are out there. It's just what we're experiencing right now. I know it's not the, the best uh, news to hear, but that's the type of offers that we're competing against, especially if you're in the lower price points, the um, under 350,000, most definitely is the hottest part of the market right now. Once those price points raise up a little bit, you do get a little relief there, but not much at all. Um, so expect to pay above list price of whatever you see a home listed at. Expect to offer some type of difference or guarantee above the appraisal. It's the market that we're in and we haven't seen any slowdown in that yet. Um, Inman had reported that data from Redfin said there's more bidding wars in January than any other time during the pandemic. So we've seen it a lot last year. We've seen it a little bit the year before. Um, we did slow down last year around August. We didn't see as many bidding wars, but they came hot and heavy in January. And I am experiencing that on every listing, um, whether I'm on the listing side or the buying side. There's multiple offers on basically anything that we've touched recently. So expect it. If you want to get into a home, you want to lock in that contract before the rates go up again, expect the competition. Um, it, is, it is the market that we're in, and that's what we're seeing right now. One thing that we are seeing also um, at, at a, in a very high volume is VA buyers are struggling. Um, to get locked into homes, to get their offers accepted. And a lot of people wonder, why is that? I wonder why is that? So um, there is a misconception out there, and it is a misconception. In my experience, I don't see any truth to this 
whatsoever, um, but I hear it all the time. Um, when a person has a VA loan, um, which we should respect our veterans <laughs> and not uh, penalize them, but when a person has a VA loan, a lot of times when you're in a multiple offer situation, uh, the, uh, there's even times that the sellers will say they don't want to take VA because they think that VA inspections or appraisals are going to be too stringent and that they're going to require them to do extra stuff or things like that to make their offer, um, which makes their offer look weaker amongst the other loan types or the other type of offers coming in. Um, that may have been an old thing that, that happened years ago. It would have been something that happened way before I was ever in real estate. But we, I hear that often um, that you know the VA offer is not as strong as all the rest of the offers. Now, of course, if you have a VA, VA loan and you're not offering any difference between appraisal and your contingency dates are very high and all of that things, uh, all of those things, that is making your offer essentially weaker than all the other offers that you're competing against. But VA has just as much um, ability to offer all of those things to compete against a conventional or an FHA or even a cash offer. Um, you can make those offers stronger and just because you're a VA buyer doesn't mean that you don't have the ability to do those things. As far as the appraisals coming in lower on a VA loan versus any other loan type, I've been on the listing side many times where there's a VA buyer and that, I've not experienced that. I, I don't think that there's truth behind it. I don't think that that's something that is valid. Um, I believe that the appraisers appraise comps and subdivisions the same way, no matter what type of appraiser they are. So I don't, I, I believe that is a misconception out there that is not true. And inspections on VAs, well, VA doesn't do a home inspection. So that is another misconception. It's the buyer's right always, no matter what loan type you're doing, or if you're not doing a loan type whatsoever, always the buyer's right to do a home inspection. Um, that doesn't change whether you're a VA buyer or not. When the VA appraiser comes to appraise the house, there it's the same criteria basically as any other loan type. Of course, the home has to be in livable condition. Um, you'll experience that with any loan type. Um, no broken windows, there has to be carpet on the floors, there has to be a stove. There's, I, I have not seen anything that is more stringent on VA versus any other loan type. So if you're a seller out there and you get these offers and your VA buyer's offer, you get an offer from a VA buyer and it looks just as strong or competitive as the other offers, don't back out on that just because you've heard all of these misconceptions out there. Um, there are, they are misconceptions, I'm telling you from experience. And as long as that offer is as strong and offers the same or better um, terms than all of the other offers, there's nothing to be afraid of with um, going into a VA offer. You may have a little bit longer processing time, but with a good local lender, I'm not seeing that either. I've seen a lot of lenders that are able to close VAs in 30 days, just like any other loan type. So uh, make sure to check your, you know, check check the facts and find out that you know there's a lot of uh, things that go around in real estate that are not accurate. So we hear that a lot. Um, again. Thank you guys for joining me today. I just wanted to fill you in on all of the news headlines and everything that we had uh, going around, you know, buzzing around in the real estate industry and give you an update on what's happening now. Um, again, we're having a investing seminar this evening. So to give you just a little rundown of what the seminar is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, I need a drink. Um, we're going to be talking about how to get your first rental property, how to uh, start looking at real estate investments. Um, no matter what market you're in, investing in real estate can, is a long-term um, long journey that can build wealth over time and is always a great decision to build your, your portfolio. And even if you're, you know, you own your home right now, that is something that you should think of in the future. If you own the home that you're living in, start thinking about 
building wealth through real estate with um, purchasing investment properties and things like that. We're going to teach you how to do that. We're going to show you breakdowns of what the return is over time on, on investment properties, such as if you, you know, say you made a $60,000 um, down payment on an investment property, what, how much money would that $60,000 make you if you left it in your savings account versus if you invested that into a real estate purchase? The return that you get off rental income plus the return that you get off equity over time is such a greater return than you could ever get holding your money in a financial institution. So we're going to have a breakdown of that and talk about those options for you. And even first time home buyers that do not currently own a home, but maybe want to consider investing in a multi multifamily unit where you're owner occupied and the rent income that you're receiving from the other units can actually pay your mortgage and build you more wealth over time. So it's going to be a really great seminar. I look forward to seeing you guys there. Today is February 24th, 2022. If you're watching us live, join us tonight. If you're watching us later on in the future and you want to hear more about investing options or talk about what we talked about during the seminar, I'm happy to give you a one-on-one -on -one consultation reach out to me. My name's Trish Williams. My phone number is 702-308-2878. And if you guys are watching and following the show, please like, comment, share, download, tell your friends about us, and join us every Thursday at 9.30 a.m. right here on Realty Check.